How are you reading the resurgence in terms of risk in the Middle East? Well, we have to separate the uh, uh, short-term political risk from the fundamentals. The fundamentals are still very strong. If there was nothing, uh, no, no political risk added, uh, the prices would rise to 95 98 maybe $100 the second half of the year. And then OPEC Plus has to decide, can we, shall we put some volume in or shall we just wait? If they don't put any volume in there, the prices will hit $100 a barrel. Uh, political risks, 4 or $5. There is no big political risk in this market because OPEC Plus has 6 million barrels per square capacity. And everybody knows if their supplies are cut, it's overnight they can increase the volumes and make up the difference. When we talk about risk, some are looking at the Straits of Homers, as Stephen Sachimsky was talking about earlier. How are you assessing the risk of a closure? I'm sorry, this is a nonsense question. Because people think that the Strait of Hormuz is a one-way street, that only oil goes out. 80% of the food in Iran comes in through the Strait of Hormuz. You close the Strait of Hormuz, you starve the people inside of Iran. So it may be something for a few days, maybe one week, uh, as a sort of a uh, showing of, show of force, but it cannot be closed because the Iranian population will starve without the Strait of Hormuz. If it happens, though, because some people say it might happen, if it happens, how might it affect the market? How will this play out? If it happens, it can increase the prices $20, $30 a barrel, but still, it is a lot of spare capacity. And at that time, all the sanctions against Russia needs to be suspended uh, because we need the Russian oil. Russian oil is uh, actually capacity to export is now bigger than the pre-sanction period. Uh, so you have to open the hands on them, Venezuela, and a lot of other people. But uh, the possibility is really one in 10,000. Mm, we talked about possibly a tightening market. How are you assessing that in relation to perhaps demand from China? Uh, China's economy is beginning to recover and it may demand uh, more oil on the back of that. Well, Chinese oil demand grew by 1.6 million barrels per day last year. This year is only 400,000. Chinese oil demand will peak by 2027, so close by. Uh, and this is a very big change in the global market because the, the world has been waiting for China to come in and rescue the market whenever there is a, any issue. That uh, role is going to cease. The Chinese will be, for the next last 20 years, they controlled the, glo the global demand by uh, having the massive consumption. Uh, they're going to do the same role with LNG for the next 20 years, but the oil chapter is going to be closed. We know that the U.S. House of Representatives is looking at a legislation banning China from buying Iranian oil. What impact might that have? Well, Chinese statistics show that there is zero Iranian oil imported. But uh, imports from Malaysia is one, one million barrels per day, although Malaysia only produces 400,000 barrels per day. Imports from Oman are bigger than the total Omani production. This is all Iranian oil renamed. And the Biden administration has deliberately turned a blind eye. And as long as Biden is in the office, I don't think there will be any change. Mm. And in terms of U.S. looking at reimposing uh, sanctions as well as restrictions on Venezuela, would that have a major impact? No, Venezuela is a bit re irrelevant. Uh, sanctions or no sanctions make a 200,000 barrels per difference. Venezuelan oil industry is uh, destroyed by Mr. Chavez and by Mr. Maduro. It takes five to ten years of sane management to bring them back to three million barrels per day. But at the moment, it's all a matter of a couple of hundred thousand. So that will not. Next to cause, cause prices to, to hike. But Iran, Iran, you know, Iranian oil production now is almost near capacity. So if either we wait for President Trump come, to come in there and impose real sanctions that he put in place, or if uh, some, by some dramatic change, the U.S. changes policy, the Iranian production will go down by a million, million and a half barrels per day, which the Saudis will make it overnight. Uh, Faradun, we know that OPEC Plus has extended uh, that lid on production. How much longer do you think that will persist, given that Saudi Arabia actually needs oil at 100 bucks a barrel to balance its budget? I don't believe in these numbers of the, they need so much. The Saudis, uh, they manage the system very well. Uh, basically, in the Middle East, the more money you have, the more money you spend. If you have less, that you'll be more careful. Uh, so I think that this, 
to say that they need $100. No, everybody needs more money, but uh, they can manage with far less. And uh, they have been, I mean, if you uh, visited the, the country, the country has just been so dramatically changed. Everything is so dramatically changed. So lots more flexibility there than uh, financial analysts give it credit to. We know you have great insight into the energy sector, energy space and market. Is there something that perhaps traders and the rest of the world isn't quite understanding when it comes to the energy market? What, what, what are we missing out on? I think the fundamentals and the prices are disconnected. Uh, why does prices, your prices go to $83? There is $5 maybe, uh, this premium in the price today. But why is it there? The fundamentals are so strong. We are going to go higher prices, and if we have some minor change because of the geopolitics, it will be corrected, self-corrected by itself. We are going to $9,500, and the key thing to look for is that is OPEC Plus going to add in 250, 500,000, maybe even a million barrels per day or not in the second, in the, in the third or fourth quarter of the year, not in the second quarter. And I think they will do it because if they don't do it, prices will go above $100.